and gentlemen. See any of you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Michelle Mio. I am the studio administrator for Atlanta Hollywood Acting Studios and have helped to put this show together, which we're very excited about. Um, these guys have been working on it for so long. Um, but without further ado, I wanted to introduce Kelly Savoy. She is the reason we're all here. Our founder and owner, Ms. Kelly Savoy. much for coming out here in the rain tonight. Um, I just, I'm going to read off my cards because everything that I've got to say in here is so important. I don't want to miss anything. But once again, thank you guys so much. This is the first ever Atlanta Hollywood Acting Studios Showcase. Big dream. <laughs> Big dream. Okay. Thank you. It's hard to believe that just three months ago, not even three months ago, we opened our doors. And, you know, all of this is really a reflection of a determined soul, of many determined souls. Um, our group of Woodstock actors are dedicated and training very hard to make an impact and show the world that Georgia actors are bookable and preferable. Amen. <laughs> They're a tribe help each other and support one another. And guess what? We are booking. <laughs> All right. Over 70% of our actors are represented and those that are not, we're working really hard to make that happen. We're a full service studio and taping is a big part of that. And last week we taped over 30 auditions. Yeah. Late into some nights. Yeah. <laughs> Three in the morning in some cases. Yes. We are also working with local producers and cinematographers to ensure our talent has quality reels to book from. We are creative. 10 of the 16 scenes that you'll see tonight are original. They're, they've been written by our actors. And judges, we'll ask, um, we'll ask you later to tell us which ones are the best of the best. Oh, not <laughs> no. Sorry to do that to you. <laughs> we are also writing and shooting our own work having just wrapped a shoot for a short film in early January and shooting another one next month. Yay! We care about our community. We have aligned ourselves to other creative organizations in Woodstock and Cherokee County. You'll see more of us here in this venue, Elm Street. This year as well, we're going to be with the Cherokee Theater Company. We hope, yes. Yes. Yeah. We're working on that. Yes. You will. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> And of course, Papa's Pantry, who does a phenomenal um, work for the less fortunate in our area, in our county. Um, so we, we, we have nicknamed ourselves AHA, which of course is an acronym for Atlanta Hollywood Acting Studios. And I think it suits us well. AHAs, yes. And so we're growing and we're looking to bring on more preteen, teen, and adult actors in all of our levels of acting beginner, intermediate, advanced, for film and TV acting. We have the best teachers. Wow. I could go on, but I only have a few minutes. And Michelle is like, nope, stick to the script. She is producing this, so I, she's doing great. Before we bring on our actors to perform a few logistics, we want to perform a few logistics. Um, judges, in your red packet, you'll find a program listing uh, has each scene an actor with all the headshots in order of the performance. And you'll also notice a small green sheet. Please hold on to these because we're going to ask you to vote for the best actor, the best actress, and the best original performance. Piece. Piece. The best original piece, monologue, monologue or two-person scene. Two -person scene. Mm -hmm. Best actor and actress will win a free month of classes, and best original piece will win a short film produced by their story, about their story. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce our esteemed panel of entertainment industry experts, starting with one of our most beloved teachers, Aaron Bethay. So, Aaron is an acclaimed actor, producer, and host of an Emmy Award winning series. Um, many of you might have seen her in the amazing Fireproof movie. Um, 
several months ago, a couple of years ago? Yeah. Many years in 2008. Many, 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 many moons ago. <laughs> Having starred in over 20 feature films, she is best known for her leading role in the breakout film Fireproof. Her life partner, Drew Waters, is an accomplished actor and award-winning director, most recognized for his work <coughs> on critically acclaimed, acclaimed series such as Friday Night Lights, Breaking Bad, and a recurring role on NCIS LA. Both of these two wonderful people are assisting us with the production and shooting of our fil short film coming up in February. Yes. And we are very much indebted to them. Oh my gosh. Oh, um, with us in spirit is Laura Huntington, unfortunately, of Classic Talent Agency, owner and principal. Unfortunately, Laura is not feeling very well tonight. So she is with us in spirit, but of course we wanted to um, make sure that we tell you how important she is to us. You're going to see classic talent agency across many of the names that you see on the screen tonight. Also working with Laura, we have Angelica Paris. She is a wonderful Latin American actress and entrepreneur. She prides herself in seeing people achieve new goals exceptionally. She founded Angel International, and Angelica, I hope I said that correctly, that is dedicated to unite, encourage, and inspire women in all walks of life. Her partner, husband, Rico Paris, is with us as well, is an American actor fitting into the diversity of the times in the industry. He starred in several TV shows, such as The Resident and Better Call Saul. Over the last few months, Rico has made some jumps into the film world with the opportunity to work with directors like Jason Wynn and Janice Bravo, I hope I said that correctly. Um, his following film appearances have not been announced yet, but we can expect to be present um, pleasantly surprised soon. And the wonderful Rick Perez, another great supporter of the studio. Yes. You might recognize this man. He's been on our um, TVs quite a bit recently. He is a working actor with the prestigious Houghton Talent Agency. He was featured in the Fox television series, The Resident, the blockbuster hit movie, Mile 22, and the 2018 reboot of Superfly. He is currently working on a co-star role in a feature film, which is very hush-hush. We do know that he is working with this um, film with Debbie Harmon Productions. He is passionate about working and aspiring actors and helping them gain a more profound understanding and the power of self-branding and building a business around themselves when starting out. Alpha Trevet, one of our much-loved acting coaches. He is an Atlanta-based actor, starring as Dr. Allen in Tyler Perry's new TV series, Too Close to Home, on TLC. Alpha is also known for his recurring role as Israel Proctor in Banshee, Judge Stone in Drop Dead Diva, and the landlord in Tyler Perry's The Haves and Have-Nots. Alpha has just signed on to a series sh showing it on a network we can't name, due to a contract requirement. But let's just say the so network might be named after a woman with the initials OW. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joining us tonight as well is Dallin Huntington from HWR Classic Productions. I need you to make sure I got that right. Mm -hmm. Originally from LA, he is the co-founder and COO of HWR Classic Productions, um, who have written and produced a web series called Thanks for Coming Georgia, C-U-M-M-I-N-G Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> which is on your YouTube channel at HWR Classic. And uh, they wrote and shot a short film titled Jealous as well. Uh, let's see, uh, Dallin also booked in the last year an episode of MacGyver and the Seth Rogen film Untitled Pickle Comedy. And then of course we have with us tonight someone who is very near and dear to me, Rebecca Ho, president of the Cherokee Theater uh, Company. Um, Cherokee Theatre Company has been for years working to build the arts in our community and they have residents down at Canton Theatre and they run a season every year of four to five um, different shows and they're an amazing organization I've loved working with them. Um, as well as being president of Cherokee Theatre Company, she is also a producer with Georgia Broadcasting. Uh, public. Yeah, that. Georgia <laughs> Public Broadcasting. <laughs> And then, of course, you probably can't see him, but you can see the cameras in the back at the tech desk. It's Jack Winch, cinematographer. He's also from LA. You know, when we met him in a meeting, 
he started, talk, we were talking about doing reels for our, our students, and he, oh yeah, I did Heath Ledger's, I did Viola Davis, da 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 da. He's amazing, and tonight he is professionally shooting our showcase for us for promotional purposes. So I think that's everyone. I think it is. So without further ado, we might get on with the show. What do you think? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the actors of the Grand Hollywood Acting Studios. Thank you. Rebecca? Oh my goodness, it, it's been absolute ages. I, I haven't seen you around the park in forever. How have you been? You did not just say the D word. I thought you and Sid were great. I mean, last I heard... James, stay away from those monkey bars! Last I heard, you and Sid were fine in couples counseling. What happened? He cheated on you. Oh, no. Okay, can I be honest with you? We all saw it coming. I mean, we talked about it in book club last month. James, stay away from those monkey bars. I will not tell you again. Get down. You had to have known, right? <laughs> I mean, where did you think he was going all those late nights and business trips? He's an insurance adjuster, for God's sake. <laughs> and the only thing he was adjusting was her bra strap, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you know, it, it, you had to have known. I mean, his college nickname was Too Bitty City. Okay, okay, but it, it's gonna be all right, Rebecca. It's, it's gonna be fine because, you know, everyone says life after divorce is great. <laughs> and besides, we all know he had a bit of a lap pinky. <laughs> I mean, it's a wonder you had kids at all. It's gonna be like living in your 20s again. Just think about it. I mean, once you get past the financial ruin and the psychological damage to your kids, <laughs> you're gonna have fun again. <laughs> James Archibald Craven, get off of those monkey bars! I will not go to the hospital for the third time this month! My child is destined to live in my basement forever. <laughs> so, how is she? Marty, she needs to go back to Chicago. That's not an option, please. It's not happening. Marty, she needs a life. She needs to stay here with us, Wendy. Well, I spoke to Coach Daniels and her spot is still available on the swim team. Wait, you spoke to her without talking to me first? I'm just trying to do what's right. While excluding me from the process? What's the matter with you? You said we're business partners, right? Yes. Right. Well, sometimes business partners disagree. Caitlin's mom said she would house her. You trying to teach her your little trick? When shit gets hot, you just, you just pack up and run? Is that it? Fuck you, Marty. Let me tell you something, Wendy. If we run, we're dead. Marty, look dead. around you, okay? This place is death. Not two days ago, there was a corpse that came up to our dock. And lest we forget, there is an old man dying of cancer right now in our basement as we speak. How long before you follow her? To Chicago, how long? Marty, I have done nothing since I've been here except support you. And, and I have saved this family over and over again. Great. Wendy's here, everyone. We're safe. Shut up before you say something you can't take back, Marty. How long have you been planning this? Tell me. I have been planning this. That's a crazy, crazy thing to say. Why don't you say what you feel right now? Can you do it? Or are you just being a deceitful bitch? Wow. Okay, Marty. You want to talk about betrayal? Really, you want to go there? Yeah, bring it. All right. You have a video on your computer of me. Yeah? Yeah. Marty, you've been watching it for months. There is a counter on that thing and you have watched it 27 times. Do you think I wanted to watch that one time? If you knew, if you knew 
Why don't you confront me? What would I say? Anything. Anything at all. Instead of pushing down all those emotions, distancing yourself from no, 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 anything no, 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 that no, no, you no, no, feel. No, 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 Do not turn this around on me. This is not about me. This is about you, and this is about that. Marty, you walled me out. And how you've lived a goddamn lie every time you come back to this house. Every night you come back to this house, you're living a goddamn lie. How do you do it, Wendy? I'd really like to know. Explain it to me. You slapped my ass, Marty. I slapped your ass because I thought you might like it. That is bullshit, and you know it. It's bullshit. I do something for my wife I think she might enjoy. Just stop it. My own wife? But instead, I end up doing exactly what your fucking lover did. Stop. That's bullshit. You know how many times you could have said no to that guy, Wendy? When he asked you for your phone number, you could have said no, but you didn't. When he bought you a drink, you could have said no then, but you didn't. When you decided to get a fucking hotel room with him, you could have backed out, but you didn't. And when he managed to stick his tongue down your fucking throat, but you didn't. That's bullshit. Like the first time he slapped your ass. And why would I say no, Marty, huh? What was I saving myself for? Intimacy from you? I don't know. Any affection from you? Maybe I was trying to protect you. I didn't want your protection, Marty. I wanted you. Why do you even want me here? Necessity, not desire. Why didn't you let Dale kill me then when he had the chance? What, no dry would he come back? No more truth, Marty? Just tell me the truth. Just tell me the fucking truth. You broke my heart, Wendy. told you already what happened. My husband, John, and I, we went up to the cabin. Everything was fine. We got settled down. We unpacked. I started cooking dinner. Everything was fine until I heard this noise. <clears throat> I'm telling you, I've never heard this noise before. So, of course, my husband, John, he grabs the flashlight and he wants to go and check it out. I begged him to stay. I'm telling him to stay. And he wouldn't listen to me. And he told me to wait, so I waited. And 10 minutes goes by, and I'm wondering where my Johnny is at. Where is my Johnny? So I open up the door, and, and that's when I see that this thing I'm telling you, this thing had nails and these eyes, and I've never seen anything like that. Please, you, you have to believe me. This thing has my husband, and I, I, we need to go back and get my husband. I, I, I left him there, and I got in my car, and I didn't know what to do, and I just I left him there. Please, you... You have to believe me, my, my, my Johnny is out there. It, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. work the symphony music in the background. Bear with me here. Everybody all right? Yeah. Yeah, let's hear it. All right. 
Hello, I'm Chip K. you know that. And you are a beautiful crowd. Yeah, a lot of Botox, hair pieces, silicone. <laughs> I paid for my share. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit turned around here. <clears throat> okay, enough of that. You know, my mama used to say, Chipper, you make people laugh. That's good medicine. Well, she had no idea how many people I pissed off. <laughs> yeah, asshole. Yeah. Sounds like a proctologist. How you doing, man? Welcome. And I want to thank all my friends for coming. And I don't want you to hear you say you suck. I want my money back like last time. That's, that's why I bought all your tickets. All three of you. My barber, psychiatrist, and yeah, hey, analyst. Come on, Doc, smile. Finally, a paying gig. Whatever. Anybody got something funny to say? Want to get into business? Come on. Oh, boy. Dumb audience, huh? <laughs> Last night, they took the show over. I left at this guy's date, and I told her to tell him that she blew her back out laughing at him. Yeah, yeah. We got some, we got a lot in common up here. I show you my butt and <laughs> you laugh, show, you, show me your teeth. <laughs> and then it's like, you know, it, it, everything is ever like asinine, asinine. So, I love my dog. He puts his nose on my face and I like it. <coughs> bad news is, if I don't wake up by seven sharp, he'll turn all the way around and put his ass on my face. <laughs> yeah, good news is I'm always up by seven. <laughs> uh, see you next time, folks. <laughs> I love what you're doing here. I'm so glad to be a part of it. I mean, I can't even imagine what's going on in my town and at my school. It's been going on for a really long time now. Miss Thorne, you said you couldn't trust anyone except for the people inside the circle. Right. But I mean, what about the police? No. No, 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 no. Not the cops. You, you, you don't understand. They, they're clients, too. They are, and we don't know which ones. It goes so much deeper than you know, Ashton. I mean, there has to be someone. What about the FBI? There's no proof. I mean, the problem is, the takers, they go to these girls that are 18 years old, they're graduating from high school. They're already troublemakers. The FBI just thinks that they left and they've not come back. But after L, you have an open window, right? Yes. Yes, we do. And they took that sweet 11-year-old. They opened it up. How are you? Me? I'm fine. And JT? You know? I make it my business to know. <laughs> I've been watching him. I've been watching him for a really long time, and I, gosh, I just, my hope was just for him, you know? I really thought he was a sweet kid. He is a sweet kid. Ashton. He is. He's changed, you Thor. Ashton, no, 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 no. Yes, he has, and he didn't even know. Okay, Ashton, listen, I know that you guys have a relationship of closeness of some sort, but listen, you, no, you cannot trust him, you cannot trust him. I can't anyone. trust him. Ashton, he took Sarah and Mia to the takers. Do you not understand that? Because he didn't know. He thought that they agreed to work with Jack. He thought that they signed the contract. If he knew, then he wouldn't have done it. 
I know him. I mean him and his daddy were threatened. This is a much deeper relationship than just a friendship, isn't it? He tells me everything. He wants to go to the cops, Miss Thorne. He wants to make things right. <laughs> Listen, Ashton, do you want to get involved with him? Listen, he, he was pimping out women, for Pete's sakes. He, this is like all promiscuous. And he knows that. Okay? When they took L, he was broken. I mean, six years ago, his sister died in a car crash, and now it's just all happening all over again. I couldn't watch him break like that. He starved himself for three days and deprived himself. I told him that we'd find her. I mean, you can't go promising that. It's just Messed up. What am I supposed to do? Watching him just fall apart. I couldn't do that, Miss Thorne. But he needed help. Okay, he needed some crazy help. I get it. I do. You don't know this, but my daughter was taken seven years ago. That's why I'm here. I'm here for y'all. <laughs> I understand. I have a trust issue, but I do understand and hope. <laughs> Sometimes, I wish I could just forget my whole childhood. If you could even call it a childhood. I never really knew my real mom or dad. And I'll probably never know if I have any siblings or not. I do remember my first foster parents. Alice and Gary. They were nice, but then the state took me away, sent me to another family, and then another family, and then another. It's funny for someone who's had four families to really have none. I've even confused them enough that I've grouped them together and given them one last name, the Fosters. It's not an excuse, but I think life would have been, would be a lot better if I had someone to love me Someone to give me positive reinforcement. I've always tried to work really hard in school, but I have nothing to show for it. I've always wanted to play tennis, but I don't know if I'll ever be able to play because I've never gotten a chance to try. Who knows, maybe I'm the best player since Serena Williams. Probably not. But I like to dream about it sometimes. Just like I like to dream about having my own family. 
maybe even my own. Why would I do it? Why would I murder the only person on this planet that I love? You know, Detective, it's funny. She was so smart, beautiful, kind. She was gonna be a nurse. But Daddy didn't like when we were kind. He said when we were kind, we get walked through, talked any type of way we want to, ran through. And you know, when I was little, he used to teach me lessons. He said those lessons were for me to become a man. He used to yell at me, beat me, beat me. But it was all for me to become a man. And so my sister called me today and she said, Daddy's gonna teach me a lesson for being too nice at school. I couldn't let that happen to her. I loved her so much. So I went there and sure enough, Daddy's teaching her a lesson. He's yelling, beating, and raping her. She's stealing from my name. She's saying, help me, help me, you love me. And he's just raping her and just saying, become a man, become a man, now's your time. And he pulls out a gun and he tells me to become a man. She's yelling, help me. And I became a man. Music's nice. Makes me think of Grace. What do you want to kill yourself about sometimes? <laughs> I want to kill myself when I think that I'm the only person in the world. And that that part of me is trapped inside this body and uh, only ever bumps into other bodies without connecting to the one other person trapped inside. I feel very... Sad? I don't know what it is. Say it anyway. Protective. Good. It's very nice. Looking for someone to take care of me this time? <laughs> well, are we all? Why do we keep going from one subject I don't like to another? What's this? All of a sudden the armor's on. What about your armor? I haven't got any. Besides, I wasn't talking about you. You know, some of us have problems, sorrows, but people like you are so busy telling us how you feel, you don't even notice the rest of us. I've done nothing but notice you. You don't notice me. You smother me. And I'm not going to give up everything again for someone I don't know and who doesn't know me. Who says you have to? We're, we're talking about love here. We're not in love. What do you mean? Maybe that's what you think. I, you know, I think we're in love. Just because you've given up doesn't mean you have to drag me down to that level of thinking. I think you better leave. I thought you were a kindred spirit. You didn't know what kindred means, right? You know, two of a kind sharing a great affinity. I know what kindred means. Oh, how about we go for affinity then? You know, that's the first really rotten thing you said to me. I thought you were sad and weird. I didn't know you were cruel. I'm sorry. No, it's just a cruelty waiting to happen. I'm not going to be there when it does. I want you to go. Why do you want me to go? I want to be alone. Seriously? Alone? 
Sooner or later, you're going to have to deal with us. C come on, tomorrow's Sunday. It's our day off. We'll, we'll sleep in. Let's, let's talk. Please go. <sighs> Fine. I, I promise I'll go. Only first, I want to make a call. And why is this always so goddamn hard? Hello? Yeah, Midnight with Marlin? Yeah, my, my name's Johnny, and uh, yeah, I know you don't take requests, but could you just listen to me for a second? Now, there's a man and a woman. They uh, meet, but they don't connect. Only she noticed him, and he noticed her. I mean, I mean they both knew it was going to happen, you know. And, well, uh, they made love. And for maybe one night, they forgot the million reasons why someone would think, I, I don't love this person. Instead, it was, it was perfect, and, you know, they, they were perfect. Only now she's starting to forget. And, you know, pretty soon he's going to forget, too. So I was going to ask you, could you play us an encore for Frankie and Johnny in the hopes that something ought to last and, and not self-destruct? Well, okay, thank you. I want to show you something. That guy I didn't want to talk about, he did this with a belt buckle. It's gone. It'll never go. It's gone. I made it go. No, Johnny, you can't make it go away. He's the reason I can't have kids. And he knocked me around when I was pregnant, and there were complications. He's gone. And I would never hit you. Never. You don't have to be afraid anymore. I am. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of who I am, who I'm not, what I might become. And what I might never become. And I'm tired. I'm tired of being afraid. Listen, honey. I, I can't make the bad go away. You're, you're right, I, I can't. But when the bad comes again, I'm going to be next to you. I can't, Johnny. I'm sorry. Thank you for seeing me on such short notice. I hated to ask, and I'll only keep you for a minute. And besides, if I'm in here for too long, some of these people might start to get suspicious. But anyway, there's some serious stuff, some real serious shit that I think you ought to know about, okay? There's a thief among us on the third floor. Now, I don't know if it's someone who works on the third floor or if they even work here at all. I don't know. Maybe it's some sick psychopath who just gets their rocks off by terrorizing the employees of this company. I really don't know. But in any event, what I need from you is access to the security footage on the third floor. In particular, the footage from the break room. Someone's been stealing lunches from the community fridge! <laughs> and I'm gonna find that son of a bitch! 
Because it's not enough that I haven't been able to eat my ham and cheese sandwich every day, all right? No! It's my lunchbox collection. <laughs> all right, first it was SpongeBob, and then it was Batman. Now my Super Mario Galaxy lunchbox is gone. I got that from Santa Claus in eighth grade. And soon I have to start bringing a, a brown paper bag with my shit. <laughs> it's not cool, man. I'm sorry, can you just, uh, can you just give me that footage when you get a chance, please? <laughs> By the way, that's a sweet ass Avengers lunchbox you got there. <laughs> hey, Timothy, come closer. Come closer. You're going to be a team, you're going to form a band. We're going to travel the world and sing songs and listen to the applauses and the cheers from the crowd. <laughs> you feeling it? <laughs> you ready? Yes, that's him, the renowned singer SKY. I know, I know the media is reporting that he's missing for the last five days, but he's here. He's actually dead. I got it. You know, music was my passion, but my parents, they wanted me to do medicine. I did medicine and became a surgeon. Now, I want to utilize my education to master music. And I know it's your passion too, so we're going to do this together, okay? We will study his body. We'll study his body and find some exercises to make our body exactly like his, especially the throat, the vocal cord. Then that's it, man. We produce the magic. Ready? <laughs> oh. Blood. <laughs> it's sweet, a little metallic, and thick. Taking notes? Okay. We need to find a way to get a blood like that. <laughs> oh, we don't know how a normal human blood tastes like. It's very metallic. Okay, you need to make it sweet. <laughs> come here, man, come here. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Did you see his walking card? That's a curve, man. <laughs> That's where he produced the magic, you know? Ah, ah. <laughs> That's it, man. Oh, we need to have our vocal cord with a bend on this side. So probably we should sleep like this. <laughs> or do some exercise like this. Take notes. Oh, oh no, I have a problem. Do you know how a normal human throat would look like? <laughs> hey, 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 stop!
state your name for the record. Officer John Dawson. Mr. Dawson, would you please in detail recount the nights of January 2nd and the events that took place? Yes, Miss Martin, I will. On the night of January 2nd, I responded to a domestic 911 call. I was the first officer to arrive on the scene. When I arrived, I found a young lady, lady there lying, beaten half to death. Ten years on the force, and I have never seen anything like this. I mean, who could do such a thing? Opinions aside, please stick to the facts of the event. Like I said, she was beaten half to death. Lacerations all over her neck, face, and her body. Her eyes had swelled shut. I mean, blood everywhere. So I called for backup, and I waited there with her. At what point did you call for backup? How much time had passed? Couldn't have been no more than five, maybe ten minutes. Well, which is it? Because we have here that you called, arrived at the scene of the crime at 11.05 p.m., and yet dispatch has you asking for backup at 11.25 p.m. A 20-minute discrepancy. Where did that time go? 10, 20 minutes. It was like a damn horror movie watching her lie there. I wasn't looking at no clock. What happened after you called for backup? Well, one of the neighbors tipped me off saying that the suspect went back into the house. I didn't want the suspect to get away, so I proceeded into the house. So what you're telling me, Mr. Dawson, is that in an act of sheer intuition and poor judgment, you went after the suspect despite having no backup. It wasn't any time. My backup haven't arrived yet, and I didn't want the suspect to get away. So I proceeded with caution, using the necessary force and my training that I accumulated over the years for situations like this. And you completely disregarded any protocol or direct orders to apprehend the suspect yourself. No, I followed the right procedure. I pursued the suspect. I went into the house. I announced who I was. The suspect came at me with a knife, then fled through a nearby window. I fired twice, two shots to the back. The suspect dropped. Knowing full and well you were supposed to wait for backup. What was I supposed to do? Just let him get away? <coughs> You didn't see this woman. What he did to her? I wasn't going to sit back and just let and him just- And what? Let him live and face due process? It is not in your line of duty to pass judgment, officer. I follow procedure. I will proceed the exact same way again if I had to. A suspect is dead instead of in custody, and there is a 20-minute discrepancy in our records. I can't help but wonder if there is intent in this pursuit, personal intent. What's that supposed to mean? This doesn't bring back any memories for you, Mr. Dawson? No, I We want to know the truth behind your actions, Mr. Dawson. Erica, don't do this. In fact, isn't it true, Mr. Dawson, that you yourself were subject to abuse That as has a child? nothing to do with this, Erica. Answer the question, John. Did you or did you not pursue the suspect because of your own personal ties to abuse and abandonment? You are completely out of line, Erica. You have no right bringing that into this situation. I told you that in the privacy of our relationship. You have no right to use that against me. I am doing my job, John. In the act of extreme emotional distress, a person may act outside their rationale, resulting in the direct disregard for protocol and order. That's not what happened here, Erica, and you know it. Did you or did you not murder this man in cold blood, John? No! I would never kill anybody or anything, Erica, for God's sake! You're lying. Bullshit! I know you. I know you, John. And I know when you're lying to me. Oh, I see what's going on. This is about us. I mean, you really gonna bring our relationship into this? If I could, I would take it back. But we don't work good together, you know this! Strike that from the record. We're done here. You can talk to your attorney in the morning. It was St. Patrick's Day, 2004, and not only was I driving and talking on my phone at the same time, but I was looking in my purse for a pen. And the very last thing I remember thinking is, this probably isn't such a good idea. And it wasn't, because I pulled out in front of a fully loaded cement truck going 55 miles an hour. As soon as I woke up, I knew I was different. Before, I was a rapid cycle manic depressant taking Depakote several times a day. I hated taking those pills. 
And every time I did, I would sit and think to myself, God, I wish I was normal. I wanted that more than anything in the world. But, as the saying goes, be careful for what you wish for. Because now I felt nothing. People don't understand. They don't understand the frustration over the memory issues or the dread when somebody at work asks you about something that happened over two weeks ago. Or the sadness when you look at your 12-year-old son and you don't remember him as a baby. Or what it's like to look in the mirror and know you did this to yourself. You were the one who was talking and driving. There is no one else to blame. Just me. something you want to talk about? I don't have time to talk today. I have a lot of homework. Mm. Can, we talk, can we talk later? No. No, we need to talk right now. Now. What happened today? Nothing. I forgot my homework in my locker. Miss Piper got mad at me. Mm, okay. Okay. Five, four, three, two. Jackson mentioned that we don't live in the best part of town. Are you happy? No, I'm Did not. Did you get your answer? Can I go now? No, ma'am, and you will not speak to me like that. You know what? That's enough. I, I'm going to call the principal right now. No, he's Mom. bullying you. Please do not call the principal. What do you, what do you want me to do? This is school out of six. Six schools, Mom. Six. That I've met someone that, that likes me. No. You don't. You know what? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I've not. I've been working all the time. I've not been spending Mom, any. <clears throat> please, this is not your fault. It is my fault. It's not. You are an incredible woman and an even better mom. This is not your fault. I'm sorry. I should have been honest with you, and I will always be honest with you from now on. I promise. You have to. I you will. Know, Rickham, you have to. My job is to love you. My job is to protect you. That is my job. I promise. You have to tell me everything. You have to I tell promise. me when things like this happen. Yes. I promise. Sorry. Sorry. I know it's been hard without Dad. I miss him too. Me too. Do I have to go to school tomorrow? No. No, no, no. You don't have to. You don't. I'll be me and you. Okay? We'll do whatever you want. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Why don't we go get some lunch, just you and me? <laughs> Are you buying? 
I have extra lunch money I could use. Oh so. my god, okay, okay. Alright. I have to go start my homework. I'll be back out in a few minutes. Okay. I love you. Do you ever think of yourself as actually dead? Lying in a box with a lid on it? I know why, really. It's silly to be depressed by it. One thinks of it as being alive in a box. One forgets to take into account the fact that one is dead. Which should make all the difference, shouldn't it? I mean, you'd never know you were in a box. It'd be like being asleep in a box. Well, not that I'd like to sleep in a box, mind you. Not without any air. You'd wake up dead for a start, and then where would you be? In a box. That's the bit I don't like, actually. I don't even like to think about it. Because you'd be helpless, wouldn't you? Lying in a box with a lid on it, you could be in there forever. And take into account the fact that you're dead, it isn't a pleasant thought. Especially if you're dead, really. If I were to ask you straight up, I'm going to stuff you in this box, would you prefer to be alive or dead? Well, naturally, you prefer to be alive. Life in a box is better than no life at all. You could lie there thinking, well, at least I'm not dead. Any moment someone's going to come over and, and knock on the lid and tell me to come out. Hey you, what's your name? Get out of that box. There must have been a moment when one first learned of death. It must have been childhood. It must have been terrifying. But yet, for the life of me, I can't recall. Eternity is a terrible thought. I mean, when's it going to end? <laughs> Say your bells. I know your bells. Well, I, I knew them before I came. If you know them, then say them. I, A, I, O, -E. Stop. Say A, E, I, O, U. That, that's what I said. I, A, I, O, U. I've been saying them for three days. I, I won't say them no more. Say A. I. A. Didn't I say that? No, Eliza. You didn't say that. You didn't even say that. Every night, before you get into bed, where you used to say your prayers, I want you to repeat this for me. The rain in Spain stays mainly on the plain. For 50 times. You'll go much further with our Lord, Eliza, if you learn how not to offend his ears. Now, for your H's. Now, listen carefully to me, please. In Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire, hurricanes hardly happen. In Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire, hurricanes no, hardly happen. No, 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 no. <laughs> do, do, do you have no ear at all? Would you like for me to say it? No, no, please, 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 no. <clears throat> we must start from the very beginning. Do this for me. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. That will uh, have to do for now. Now for the marbles. What? Open up. Your mouth. Thank you very much. And uh five models. Now, let's see where were we? I want you to read this for me and enunciate each word as if the marbles were not in your mouth. See? With blackest moss, the flower pots were thickly crusted one and all. Yes, 
Yes, you can. Yes, you can, Eliza. Again. Eliza. Yes, yes, you can, Eliza. Let's, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Do this one for me again. The rain in Spain stays mainly on the plain. The rain in Spain stays mainly... I'm so tired. I'm just so tired. Eliza, if I can go on with a blistering, blistering headache, then you certainly can as well. I have a headache too. Eliza, think about what you're trying to accomplish here. Think about what you're dealing with. The majesty and the grandeur that is the English language it is the greatest possession anyone could ever hope to have. The, the noblest sentiments that have ever flowed from within the hearts of men, contained within its beautiful, lyrical mixtures of music and sound. That's what, this right here, is what you have set out to conquer. And so help me Christ, conquer it you will. Now please, please Eliza, try it again. The rhyme in Spain Days mainly on the plane. <laughs> Again. <clears throat> the rain in Spain stays mainly on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <clears throat> I think you've got it. <laughs> heads? What kind of heads? Whoa, whoa, whoa! You're gonna shoot a deer? Thank <laughs> you. 